So welcome to another Rolling On interview around sessions and sing-arounds all over the country. Today's a bit of a special one for me because it's about Rod and Marion from the Blue Bell in Hempstead. They ran the pub from 2003 to 2015. It was just like the best place to be in the world, including, as you'll hear, three-day sessions without actually going home and all kinds of daft and crazy stuff. So today you can hear from Rod and from Ian Pease, who started the session, and from me about some of the fun and frolic that went on down there, and I think you'll enjoy this one. Happy birthday. Cheers, Ian. Yeah, God bless you. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Good to see you both. Good to see you both. Yeah, yeah. So where, where do you want to start, folks? I mean, you, you know what it's all about, don't you? It's just trying to... Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so... What do you want to do? Well, I suppose, I suppose, the, uh, I mean, the first, the, well, we start, if we start at the beginning. A very good place um, to start, yeah, good. Exactly. I mean, I, 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 I knew, I, I'd met Ian in and around the area at Stork for at the Half Moon sessions mm. and clubs. We didn't know each other that well, and I think it was the summer before it would have been, would have been 2001 maybe 2002 before yeah, we opened, too- before we opened the bluebell i bumped in we were walking along the front at sidmouth and uh i bumped into ian and i we we knew instantly you know we instantly knew each other and we couldn't place each <laughs> other and when, yeah. when you know what it's like when you're out of context you know yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. sidmouth yeah, yeah the last thing you think of is you know home and we got chatting and obviously we were both into music because we were there. Yeah. And um, and we, we sort of, we we struck up a, a friendship there and we didn't see much of each other. I think we went along to the, um, the Easter um, Stortford Folk Festival, Stork Folk, wasn't it? Um, ah, yeah, it that's right. the Woodworks one that we did then. Yeah, yeah. We were and, doing those uh, by then, weren't we? <laughs> and Rory McLeod was there. Mm. Kath, uh, Kath uh, Mundy and Jay Turner were there. Um, uh, Eric uh, Eric Roach was there. Yeah, that was. And yeah. um, we we were. That was t- um, spring two thousand and three, and we were taking over the Bluebell. We decided we'd like to, you know, put a bit of music on. So we, I approached, we knew Kath and Jay, we knew Rory, and I didn't know Eric Roach that well, but I knew of him. And they were up for doing a gig at the Bluebell. And I was talking to Ian and saying, telling him about the pub and telling him about the music. And Ian said, well, is there anything I can do to help? And I said, well, we're gonna do the gigs fortnightly. How about a session? You know, if you could get a session, help us kick off with a session, um, that'd be great. So over to Ian, because, uh, you know, he, yeah, he that um, was the beginning. That's my recollection of the beginning of it anyway. Yeah, I mean, it was actually just, just to go just to go back to the Sidma. It was quite funny because I first saw Rod in um, the Esso garage in Takeley, the one that used to be in Canfield. Oh, that's the, right. Um, I remember you telling chef. me this. That's right, yeah. Right, next, was... next to the little chef, wasn't it? Yeah. And I was just up there getting some chainsaw fuel one mm. day, mm. 20 years ago, yeah. uh, something like that. And I saw Rod in the queue, and I just remember thinking to myself, I bet he's into a bit of folk music, <laughs> you know, just a passing, <laughs> passing thought. I mean, literally, that same summer, I was in the queue, the bar queue, when the when the, the bar used to be inside the ham marquee mm. at the back. Well, yeah. I'm sure they've changed it all now, but anyway. And lo and behold, I looked, I looked along the bar queue and there was one I was thinking to myself, where have I seen that bloke? And then I then I realised it was, and I went up to him, I said, do you live in Takeley? <laughs> and he said, no, I live in Bardfield. And that was that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I went up. I went up with Ben was tiny Ben was only about two or three I remember going up driving up to the Bluebell to have lunch with Rod and Marion and just to have a to, to 
to first that's when I first saw the pub and um we sat outside the, the back there and um had a chat and then I think we started the first session in the in the um dining room yeah, in the it's corner in the by the fireplace. Yeah, so it was. Yeah, so yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was um, there was no real and, expectation, was there? Do you remember? So, we, yeah, we just... I mean, we started as as you'll recall, we started in the back there, and um, yeah. people would sort of walk up the steps and stick their head in, and I think thought it was a uh, a private rehearsal. And then I remember discussing with Rod about you know let's 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 shove this in people's faces, let's get it in the bar, yeah, and um, which we did, and 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 you know it, it, as as you both know, it just went from strength to strength. I mean, yeah, um, I suppose that's the thing about the right place at the right time with the right people, isn't it? Really, and I mean, one of the well, things has been, you know, I mean, we've been to over a hundred different sessions now, looking at what's going on, and the hospitality bit, you know, um, everybody says that's the key. You know, if you don't have someone like yourself, right? I, I think that's vital. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my. You know, I, I when we run the Bluebell, I was passionate about beer, I was passionate about the food, and I was passionate about the music. And you go in some pubs and you think, what the fuck are they doing here? You know, why? what do they, you know, they want music, but they don't want it too loud. They want musicians, but the musicians aren't drinking enough, so they don't want them. Classic you one, know, yeah. they move them yeah. out to the back room. You know, they, they, they you go in a pub and a landlord's drinking a pint of lager or a glass of wine. You you you, you bet your life the beer's going to be no good, can't you? <laughs> yeah. It was well, you know. I mean, <laughs> and it's the same with the music. I you know, I think you you can tell if somebody's passionate about it. Yeah, there's, they're, there's, they're there's, enthusiastic about it. You know, there's and, passionate. And passionate, Rod. I mean, in all our travels, we still haven't come across anyone else that invites people over to the pub for three-day sessions. I've got to tell you that. So, I mean, that, 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 that's what that's what emerged. <laughs> well, it, that, what, so, I what could, was what was your thinking? What, what was, all I can was, all I can say all I can say about that is that it's their loss, <laughs> isn't it? Well, it's their loss. <laughs> well, we think no. so, don't we? We think so. But, but well, I mean, I'll tell you. Ian, 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 no, you know, why did the sessions? We, we realised that our birthdays oh, were the, 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 yeah, okay. the famous so, birthday, yeah. <laughs> so we, and it, the first weekend we had a birthday session, Ian's birthday was on the Friday and mine was on the Saturday. And we said, right, let's have a birthday session. Let's have a weekend session, which is what we did. And that's how it, that's how it kicked off. Yeah, but and we, and <laughs> after that, it was always the nearest birth weekend to our birthday. And by the time, by the time after that first session, by the time we got to sort of July, August, we were missing the fact that 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 weekend. So we had to have an autumn session as well, didn't we, Ian? Yeah, I mean that that tied tied in lovely with the um with the remembrance with weekend. Remembrance, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, which which was always yeah, was, um yeah. very poignant wasn't it you know and dave dave mann would sing his lovely sort of first world war ballads yeah, yeah. Um, Fantastic, yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. yeah. i mean that was that yeah. was an that was another nice thing about the the session is that we started it and obviously you guys came along and everyone saw, or, or it was started by people who were not that local to the pub it's but true. very early yeah. on, people like Andy Cohen and Steve Spencer, Steve, bless him, yeah. you know. And Steve actually bought himself a quality guitar. He'd obviously oh, played before. Right. He did, didn't and he? He spent yeah, yeah. two years in his bedroom learning to play before he came <laughs> along to the session. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like Joe, Joe Kitchen, who worked yeah. at the Blue Bell, he was 14, yeah. 15. And yeah. he, he, he was... He was working in the kitchen. I said, "Go and go and have a look." That's right, oh, he yeah. said, "I play." He said, "I play bass." So I've got only got an electric bass. Can I bring it along? That's right, isn't it? Yeah. You know, do you remember uh, Bob's Alice was only eleven? Yeah, I mean, there was some and great. I mean, there were some great sessions. People like um, Clive Carroll came along with yeah, his yeah. two two children, who were sort of probably about nine and you know eight eight and. Ten or something like that, who brilliant musicians, just as he he was, you know. Yeah, it's lovely. 
And then, I mean, of course, we had we had the New Year's Eve set party, which had yeah, to have a session, was, didn't it? You know, it was special, wasn't it? Yeah. God, yeah. I mean, I, I think it. Um, you know, I mean, as we all do, just feel so fortunate to have had those years. I mean, you look back on it now, and it's like a sort of utopian time. I mean, just just incredible. I mean, when friends used to come up for a session weekend that had never been before, they were just blown away. Oh, I mean, you could yeah. almost physically see their chins hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. come up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They'd come up, have a meal and a few beers and might camp or get a taxi, whatever. And you just see people and, you know, and the next day they'd text you or they'd come out of their tents and go, fucking hell, <laughs> this is amazing, you know. But it was partly, it was part, I mean, just going back to the birthday thing, you see, like you tell that story in a, you know, another 27 pubs and the people, oh yeah, yeah, nice birthday party, it was great. What what they don't know and what we know, of course, it turned into the most bizarre set of rituals that you've ever seen in your life, didn't it? You know, I mean, it's like, now, what, what is it about... You know the bluebell and the people in the bluebell and you folks in particular that, that would take what everyone else does which is you know like you've just said like it was some innocent story oh yeah our birthday was on the same day so, and turn it into this you know massive great fish up a pole kind of sock event which that's uh, the mat the mat well that, 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 just, that just evolved you know that evolved out, that evolved out of some very drunken silliness uh, probably about two or three Two o'clock in the morning, and uh, and there again, it, it, it each year something had to be added, didn't it? You know, <laughs> that's so right. That you know, it was first it was the mackerel, then it was the sock, it was a wet sock and a dry sock, and the birthday. You know, um, I mean, the birthday baton was just the, the birthday baton. The first, well, the first year, the birthday baton <laughs> was ju- was just just a, a, a log, a stick off the fire, you know. Stick, it was just a silly, and I, I think Ian went over to the fire and picked a bit of wood up and he said, oh, you know, it's midnight, it's your birthday tomorrow, it was mine today, <laughs> so this is the birthday baton, pass it over. And that was the beginning of the birthday baton. Yeah. And then at, at two o'clock in the morning when a raw mackerel came out of the fridge and we I, I filleted it and cut it up and we ate it raw. <laughs> you know, that, that was the next year, um, the next year we had to have a fresh mackerel hanging on the birthday baton, didn't we? I've seen, I've and seen that, that film, to, that film, was it? Uh, did that's me, right. didn't <laughs> that was Ruth, Ruth interviewing and that, that is brilliant. That's on YouTube. <laughs> Good afternoon, welcome to BBC Look East. We're here at the beautiful historic Blue Bell Inn. We're here on a day of tradition throughout the centuries. We're here with actually Ian Pease who um, can tell us a bit about the tradition of the birthday baton passing. Ian, can you tell us a bit about this historic tradition? Well yes, the passing of the baton really is a sort of midnight ritual. It's the passing over of the birth rites from one person to another. And so it started really about a thousand years ago when one beardy bastard had a birthday and the second beardy bastard in the village was also going to have a birthday. And so the first beardy bastard decided that it would be quite nice to mark the occasion in the community by, by producing a baton. Um, and this has obviously evolved over the years with seven items on. And um, so you say about the items, so can you talk us through these <coughs> items that have evolved? Yeah, absolutely. We've got. So uh, well, let's start with the mackerel. Yeah. This represents the three stages of the birthday. So we've got three mackerel. These are actually wooden ones, but we do have fresh mackerel. Uh, this this is waking up on your birthday. This is lunchtime on your birthday by by being the middle mackerel. And this is the end of the birthday, which then links in to the baton, which is yeah the end of one birthday into the next. I see, yes. So we've talked about the mackerel. Um, what else is on is on the baton? What 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 are these, for example? This this end, which is the east end of the baton, mm-hmm. uh, is a dry sock. I see a dry sock. A dry, yes. it's just a dry and it has sock. to be a dry sock. It has to be dry. Yeah. It has to be bone dry. 
Uh, and at the other end, it's missing at the moment, but we have a wet sock. Okay, a wet. And, yes. and where did the wet dry sock tradition well, start? Well, the wet sock traditionally was soaked in the urine of the second birthday bastard's I urine. See, yeah. Because he was very excited because obviously it's going to be his birthday. So this the wet sock um, has come from the meaning, I'm so excited I might urinate, actually came from these parts. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the 21st century expression is... Oh, I'm so excited, I've done a little bit of wee in my mm-hmm. hands. I'm so excited, I might wee, as the young folk that's, would say. That's yeah. correct. Well, that actually originates from, you know, obviously the tradition of the birthday is that he's the second birthday bastard would be so excited that it was his or her birthday that they would actually completely urinate over one of their socks. Over, because they were so excited, exactly, they were just urinating. Yes, making it wet. Yes. So, the dry sock and the wet sock. And then, curiously, there's um, a picture, and I believe um, on the night of the birthday there was actually some ivy intertwined in it. And what about these sort of more novel, more lighter traditions? Well, the picture was added probably, you know, sort of, probably about 50 years ago. And what it represents is the evolution of the birthday boy Mm -hmm. or birthday girl into an octopus-type creature that swims in the deepest oceans looking for birthday presents. Ah, I see. Well, Ian, thank you very much for joining us. Tradition really is the uh, passing of fire, not the worshipping of ashes. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and, and happy mackerel. Happy, happy mackerel fishing and um, eating of the mackerel and slapping of the wet fish around the face. And remember, it's better to be slapped around the fish by a wet fish, not a frozen fish. <laughs> <laughs> And if your washing machine doesn't spin properly, there's probably something in it. Like a sock sodden with urine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My cousin is a baseball tart. <laughs> well, one thing that's always fascinated me, and I think um, what's nice is it sort of came up in the, the bluebells, how these sort of traditions are born, you know, and I think, um, you know, the deepest corner of Essex, we kind of started our own little tradition, really, which which was quite quite fun, you know, if not very surreal. Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's, that, it's totally starting surreal. traditions, or it's carrying traditions on, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, carrying yeah. a tradition on in your own way, isn't it? The, it? Any opportunity, if there was a tune going, especially at all session weekend, there'd be a bit of Morris dancing around and yeah. we actually that our Morris dancing escapades actually transferred to the Cambridge Folk Festival because oh, I didn't know that and, <laughs> and because there was a shortage of hankies and because wet, wet. because there were at that that time there was probably Ian and Carly with Joe as a baby and a few yeah, other yeah, people yeah. so yeah. what there was there wasn't hankies but there were wet wipes so we'd have the wet wipes for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's just classic, isn't it? So, I mean, some of the sort of themes that are, are growing as people send us in bits of writing is, it's a sort of motivation, isn't it? So, like, on, on the one hand, everything that happened at the Bluebell felt like it was spontaneous. Uh, and to some extent, it sort of was. But... You know, Ian and I used to take it really seriously, didn't we? You know, driving up there every day. You know, we did oh, the yeah. walk, didn't we, one year? Yeah, you know, with yeah, Marion and others. Yeah. 16 Amazing. mile up. But so, I mean, for, I know, remember, Ian, you know, we used to have endless conversations about, you know, if it didn't happen at the Bluebell, we'd have had to make it up because it was sort of magical. You know, it, it was weekly, yeah. remember, wasn't it? It wasn't like yeah. it was yeah. like a lot of people once a month. And it became sort of like the centre of the week. And we used to try and talk about what it, why it was so important when really everything was just so simple. But it was, wasn't it? I mean, it, it kept yeah. me sane for years. I have to tell you I, that. I, just think, um, you know, I, mean. <laughs> I think particularly more poignant over the, you know, last year and this, when yeah. we're missing the music. I mean, I... I I look upon the bluebell as as just it. It almost makes me, you know, without, it almost makes me well up remembering those days because it was so magical, 
and you know lifelong memories lifelong friends lifelong memories it was such an amazing time um i mean i'll never forget those days those evenings those weekends those lunch times the the excitement of arriving on a friday after work knowing you've got a full weekend weekend yeah you know just just if i can if i can instill some of that excitement in other people uh, you know i think those of us that that experience the bluebell i mean well, obviously you know it's jay it was like um it was like a community actually well, it was I mean, a community, I was, yeah, it was it a was community. community because all, all you all you buggers had to do was turn up drink and sing and play we did i i i, I was we did. I, you you <laughs> kept, kept drinking the beer so i had to stay on top of that People kept eating, so I had to stay on top of that, you know. Oh, those early just, morning bacon then sandwiches. Then I had to stay up and drink. I had to stay up and drink with you all night. I mean, it yeah, was it's tough, uh, Rod. It was tough. It was a chore. It was a chore. Was, yeah. But then, uh, and that, but then there'd be, you know, when it came to getting up in the morning and getting the bar ready to open, there'd be, it would be all hands on, you know. Anyone, yeah. everyone was there. I was on you the know, toilet, so I remember it well. Yeah, yeah. Toilet duties, yeah. washing the floor, clearing the tables, washing up in the kitchen, and yeah. getting lots in. Yeah. And, you know, people were clamouring to help, which was brilliant. You know, so it well, was. Well, I, I think like yeah, there was, a lot, there was a lot of camaraderie, there was, and it there was, was you yeah. know, a lot of yeah. communal spirit. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a kind of snapshot, really, of of how how ideally you know in the ideal world we all want to live you know we're yeah. all helping each other out um having that respect for for, for each other and a respect for the place um you know it was just yeah just, just incredible incredible times um and so many memories you know it's just just fantastic <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's great to come. I love it. Great to come. Thanks ever so much. Lovely. No, it's good, nice to see you. good to yeah. see you. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Up. Good to catch up with everyone. So, see you yeah. the soonest we can then. All right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Stay safe, yeah. guys. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for that. Cheers. Cheers.